Two-dimensional NMR experiments give us more precise information about how nuclei are coupled to each other. And the products of these experiments are graphs with NMR spectra on the X and Y axes and so-called cross peaks in the area between the axes. These experiments are famous for having hilarious or interesting acronyms as names, and two of the oldest and most important are COSY, or Correlated Spectroscopy, and HETCOR, or Heteronuclear Correlation. COSY is for coupling between protons, and HETCOR is for carbon-proton coupling. Correlated Proton-Proton Spectroscopy, or COSY, takes advantage of the fact that coupled protons display equal coupling constants. Once again here, we're not going to talk about how the experiment works at all. We're just going to focus on the output of the experiment. The output of a COSY experiment is two proton NMR spectra at right angles to each other. And it's the same proton NMR spectrum, just with one of them drawn tipped at 90 degrees. We can draw a diagonal line directly through a COSY spectrum that goes from the bottom left to the top right. And this divides the COSY spectrum into two regions. We only need to work in one of these regions, and so we can ignore the other one. I like to work in the top left, just to make things easier. What we're looking for in a COSY spectrum are off-diagonal peaks, or so-called cross peaks. These indicate coupling between the signals that they point to on the axes. And so, for example, we find a cross peak right here. And this cross peak, if we draw a horizontal line out to the vertical proton NMR spectrum, we land at this triplet. If we draw a vertical line up from this cross peak to the horizontal spectrum, we land at this quartet. What we can conclude from this is that this peak corresponding to this triplet couples to this peak corresponding to this quartet. And even without integration information, we could conclude, for example, that this triplet must correspond to three protons since it's giving rise to a quartet at this signal via coupling. That's what the cross peak is telling us. And that this quartet corresponds to an integration of two protons since it's giving rise to a triplet here. Looking at the structure corresponding to this spectrum, methyl ethyl ketone, we can see exactly how this splitting pattern arises. These two protons are split by the three adjacent methyl protons, which is why they're associated with the quartet splitting pattern, and of course they give rise to an integration of two. The methyl protons, on the other hand, get split by the two adjacent CH2 protons, and so they display as a triplet, and of course integrate to three. And one thing to notice is that this methyl peak is associated with no cross peaks. There's nothing in its path if we drop a line from that peak down onto the diagonal. This tells us that those protons do not engage in coupling. Of course, a conclusion that we could have come to by virtue of the fact that it's a singlet anyway, but nonetheless, we can see what this looks like on a cozy spectrum. No cross peaks, no matter how we drop a line to the diagonal, either vertically, as shown initially, or horizontally. That first example is pretty trivial, but COSY is extremely valuable in cases when we have a lot of protons that are engaging in a lot of coupling with each other. Once again here, we can draw a diagonal line from the bottom left to the top right through the COSY spectrum and focus only on the cross peaks. Using chemical shift information and the cross peaks, we can almost walk along the spectrum going from coupled to coupled proton to generate a good connectivity map for the molecule. For example, in this cozy spectrum, we can see immediately that this large singlet is completely uncoupled, and so this, which integrates to three hydrogens, must correspond to the isolated methyl group here. And from there, we can start really with any of these cross peaks and see what's coupled to what. And so this one, if we move up to the horizontal spectrum, corresponds to one of these peaks, and we see that it couples to this peak here. We also see strong coupling based on this cross peak between this signal and the one here. This is admittedly really difficult to see, but we can also tell from the COSY spectrum that this peak here, which is way out at 9 ppm, indicating that this is the aldehyde proton, is coupling to this peak here. And so this immediately tells us, for example, that this signal corresponds to this alkene proton and that its other cross peak, which corresponds to this resonance here, must correspond to the next hydrogen along, which is the other alkene hydrogen. The mess of couplings that we identified originally can be identified with these protons in the aromatic region of the molecule. Although this isn't a rigorous analysis of the cozy spectrum shown here due to size limitations primarily, the thing I want to emphasize is that the cross peaks, the off-diagonal peaks, 
give us great insight into what protons are coupling with what, and we don't have to worry necessarily about matching coupling constants, which is a pain in the butt to do because coupling constants are relatively hard to measure unless you have a computational copy of the spectrum that you can work with in software. COSY gives us visual evidence of coupling that's very easy to interpret graphically. HETCOR has a similar goal of helping us figure out what's coupled to what within a pair of spectra, one of which is plotted on the x-axis and one that's plotted on the y. But HETCOR is different because it's heteronuclear. It tells us what hydrogens are coupled to what carbons. And since coupling means connectivity, the real structural question it answers is what hydrogens are connected to what carbons. Here we don't actually want to draw a diagonal through the spectra because we're plotting two different spectra on the x and y axes. Here on the x axis is a proton NMR spectrum, but on the y axis is a carbon-13 NMR spectrum. And so every peak that appears in this area is going to be of interest to us. You'll see a lot of diagonal correlation here, and I actually want you to think a little bit about what that means. There's a good reason for the fact that a lot of cross peaks show up close-ish to the diagonal in head core spectra, and it has to do with the way NMR works and the electronic structure of molecules. Head core helps us associate peaks in the hydrogen spectrum with peaks in the carbon spectrum, and so for example, this cross peak labeled B helps us correlate this signal in the proton NMR spectrum with this signal in the carbon NMR spectrum. And based on the chemical shift of the protons, this looks like this might be the methyl group, for example, in this ethoxy fragment. Similarly, this cross peak A, which is associated with a quartet in the proton NMR spectrum, corresponds to this peak in the carbon NMR spectrum based on this head core result. And this, both the hydrogen and the carbon peaks, we can associate with the CH2 group of the ethoxy fragment. Likewise, we can use this cross peak to correlate the more deshielded alkene proton, which, based on the structure of the molecule, should be this one, since it's closer to the electron withdrawing carbonyl group, with this peak in the carbon spectrum, which is clearly, of course, this carbon that that hydrogen is connected to. The beauty of a head core spectrum, then, is that it allows us to answer the question, what carbons, based on a carbon NMR spectrum, are connected to hydrogens in a proton NMR spectrum? 